Thank you, Salema. Absolutely. A stunning day sets the backdrop for Progressions Playground as we welcome you now to the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style. What's happening, everybody? Brandon Graham joined alongside my co-pilot here, Craig McMorris. And Craig, so many iconic moments have happened over the years here at X Games on this course. And usually at the center of them, your brother, Mark McMorris, the winningest athlete in Winter X Games history. Facts. You can't dispute that. That's math. That's science. That's numbers. But let's put all the math and science behind us. Why does he have all those accolades? He has been able to perform under pressure. Last rider to go. Last run. Mark McMorris has always seemed to find a way to put it down. Can he do it yet again, Brando? We'll find out. There is a rider, though, in this field that we always anticipate getting on the podium or even winning this outright. Red Gerard. Yet he only has one bronze medal in his X Games career. Does that change here today? In my opinion, I think it does. Why? This course is so suited for Red Gerard's riding. He is very fast-footed on this tight rail section. He will destroy that shark fin feature. He's going to probably go cab 10 switch, uh, front side grab on that. So a very big trick there. And he'll go to work on our final two jumps. So, Brandon, this is a heavyweight title fight. It is game day today. We will see, can Mark McMorris lead to his medal count? He's already he got 22 total, but really it's a world's fair of riders here in slope style. Absolutely. We see a couple faces we saw in the big air. Chris Corning to mention, Rene Renacongas, as we mentioned, Red Gerard right there, and our bronze medalist from the big air, Mons Roysland. So a lot of big names, perfect conditions. It does not get any better than this. One thing I want to allude to, though, all these gentlemen that competed in the big air, that is a quick turnaround, right? That was only 14, 15 hours ago that they were riding and doing the hardest tricks they possibly can. Fatigue may play a factor, but uh, we'll have to wait and see if it really actually affects them. So that was our starting lineup for the day. How about this angle? Through the trees! From the clouds! And no better way to check out this Monster Energy men's snowboard slope style course. Enough talking about it. Let's be about it and kick things off. So our first rider to drop in out of BC, a bronze medal and knuckle huck just a couple of days ago. 27-year-old Darcy Sharp. Darcy Sharp has been very busy this X Games. As you mentioned, already got that bronze. He also com completed Pardon me, competed in the street style event. So he's handy on the steel. Well, you gotta be handy on the steel. You gotta earn your keep in the words of Warren G and Nate Dog. <laughs> it's such a tight, tight rail section up top. Coming in this first shark fin feature, switch backside 12, oh, switch backside 1080. I don't know if that was intended. But Darcy Sharp goes down. Brando, three runs, right? That's right. You get three runs. So if you fall on your first run, you fall on your second run, disregard them. You can still get it on your third one. That's the beauty of it. Darcy did not need to regulate on run one. There you go. We're, we'll keep it going. <laughs> your turn. All right, so that run one score 20, a throwaway for Darcy Sharp. But there was some things to like up there in the rail section, certainly. So we turn our attention now to a gold medalist from last night, absolutely sending it to the moon in big air, Taiga Hasegawa, just 18 years old. Switch front board, 450 out, and then a perfect backside 270 in, 270 out. You hear me say these numbers? That's the degree of rotation that they're rotating either on or off of the rail. Cap 12 off the shark fin feature. Ooh, looks like Taiga just ran out of airspace on that backside 16, but he was absolutely cooking uh, right there. As we dap up Darcy Sharp, we loved your rail section, Darcy. He was just in our booth right there. Taiga Hasegawa, though. I am scared. I am shaking in my boots for what he brings to run two and three. A 25.33. Yeah, because if this turns into, you know, everybody's looking comparable up on the rails, and this turns into a jump contest to really signal who's going to go medal, I'll take Tyga against the world. Yeah, that's like that's like Federer on grass, right? <laughs> Tyga's like Federer on grass on these two jumps. Tiarn Collins, an X Games rookie, making his debut here in slope style. Switch back to...
Beautiful cap to pull it back. When I say pull back, whoa! Oh my. <laughs> Beautiful frontside 1080 and almost too much real estate. Opposite of what we saw from Taiga Hasegawa, he ran out of room on that back 16 where Karen Collins of New Zealand just had too much room, too much airtime. Let's take a look at this front board. Wow. Here's where he goes down, though. Look at how far down the landing he goes and how much impact. Watch his knees go. And as Salama alluded to in the open, with the sun out here, sun's been shining really all weekend, how that impacts the speed of this slope style course. In the words of Ricky Bobby, cars are running fast. Cars are running real fast out here. So when you have a very fast course and a lot of adrenaline, sometimes it helps maybe one, maybe two little checks. 22 years old, out of everyone's favorite ski town, La Jolla, California. <laughs> Judd Hankus making his sixth career X Games appearance. Still in search, though, of that first podium finish, Craig. Which is really wild to believe because he is so talented and has been so talented for so long. Well, he's been out filming, too. True, true, true. So here's Judd's first run. I loved everything other than that fourth rail comes off a little bit early. Beautiful backside 1080 on that shark fin feature. Off the toes. Front side 1260, so a very unorthodox rotation, especially off the toes. Here we go. Judd. Judd was cooking. Yes, I mentioned coming off a little bit early on this rail right here. He wants to really slide to the end of the metal in between his binding, but that transfer pushes you over so far. So he has to really crash into it to get off the end. Here's that front side 1260. Let's take a look at what goes wrong on this final jump here. What air awareness to hold the grab, get it around. You hear Judd say that right there, you got three. Best run counts here in this format. Thanks. So that will do it for Judd Hankus' first run. But we move on to Chris Corning, 24 years old, out of Silverthorne, Colorado. Generally has the biggest cheering section here in Aspen. He certainly did last night in Big Air. He's got a bronze medal in his X Games career earned in Big Air. Okay, well, there's some things we're going to have to discuss on this first rail. I don't know if he meant to tap the rail. Tap, tap, tappy. Tap it in. Very nice backside 270, 270 out. Wow, cap 10. I did not think we'd see a switch frontside rotation off that. Oh, shark fin there. Now, this just goes to show everybody at home how hard the tricks that everybody is doing, right? Let's take a look. And I want to show you how hard these I'm tricks are. I'm a visual are. learner. Could you, could you show us? Let's Craig? take a look. Watch his board. He taps the front of the rail. Sorry, I'm terrible at drawing circles. But he taps the front of the rail right there, which it looks like he intended to do on the 450. Usually that would uh, scream disaster for some people. But... That was a very interesting approach. I thought I saw everything on this rail section, but Chris Corning catching me by surprise. <laughs> Whoa, that tap said Chillin' Pete. That's so Chillin' Pete, though. That's typical. <laughs> typical of him. Uh, Corning with the 23. So again, still looking for that first full pull. Chris, Craig. Chris, Chris, did, did you mean to tap the 450? No, that was on accident. That was on accident. We heard it here first. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering. So not a part of the game plan. No. Confirmation. Okay. <laughs> hey, look at the format. As we've been saying, three runs, best score counts, one to 100. Judging based on creativity, innovation, difficulty, and progression, Gregory. Difficulty is the word I want to highlight because we've seen a number of falls in this final so far. Nobody is doing any safety runs. These are the hardest possible slope style runs that you can possibly comprehend. 
Now, one of the most decorated riders in this field, owner of eight X Games medals, including one gold in this event, making his 14th X Games appearance, Sven Torgrim. That hard way back, too, on that first rail, that thing is tall. You have to get way up and over before you start rota rotating that thing. Switch back yes. double nine. That is my favorite shark fin trick thus far. Backside 16, 20. Can he hold on? He's got a great cab rotation, and there it is. Holy smokes. I think we have a new leader, Brando. Lots to break down here. Lots to love from Spent Thorgren. I was curious as to whether Sven Thorgren was going to ride. He is coming back from an injury. Right. When he landed in Aspen, his board bags were not here. But it does not seem to be affecting him. Switch backside double nine. Switch whittle. Wow. He brought this energy. We had talked about <laughs> every time. No full pull yet. And Torgren brings it out as we await his run one score, expecting something really solid. Yeah, a 90 for Sven Torgren. Okay. <laughs> we have a new leader. Well, let's get up to the third member of our team, DC. What's going on, man? Uh, thank you, Brando. Hanging out up here at the top of the course, and it is a beautiful day indeed. Ten of my favorite snowboarders in the world are out here battling it out. But next to drop, we got Rene Renacongas. If you guys didn't see his performance last night in Big Air, check out his Insta for the highlights from that performance. It was absolutely incredible. Definitely my champion from last night. And, you know, Rene talking to him when he got here, he flew from Finland to L.A., road tripped with his coach from, here, from L.A. to Aspen, stop over in... Las Vegas, getting his Jack Kerouac on. He said his headspace was in a great place, and well, when Rene's happy, you're gonna see some big things. So, definitely a people's champ, Rene Rene Congress dropping next. So here's Rene Rene Congress. He's got a silver and a bronze in this event. Oh my. I was riding this course all week, and that transfer is very far. So to go front board, use that front foot to get all the way over to another front board, is ridiculous one of my favorite rail sections so far the most unique line we've seen up top switch double backside rodeo nine switch tail grab he's got to get some mph here some miles per hour if he wants to make the landing that he right. does can rene complete this yep double voma flip and the reason it's called a Vama flip, I talked to him after the Big Air event last night. I said, what are you calling that rotation? What are you calling that fakey Ollie double flip? And he calls it the Vama flip because he learned it at the trailer park outside <laughs> of Ruka in Finland. <laughs> you know, Holy the, smokes. The thing about Rene is, you know, he helped really pioneer 1980 degree jumps yep. and rotations, yep. certainly in a Big Air. But... That really is not the definitive way of how he snowboards. There's just no one more unique taking these sorts of lines on courses like this. No one on earth could do that slope style run. Right. Nobody on earth could do that rail combo into that jump combo. Correct. Look at the double bomb of foot. He's going to go, and he pulls it right back, puts that right foot forward. Yeah. What a landing. Golf and clap. There's a look at us just we loved it. losing our minds. <laughs> we loved it. So Rene's... Gimbal God and Rene, unstoppable combo. Yeah, 86.66, so good enough for second place for Rene. What a great run. And you know you're going to get something completely different from him on run number two. If we can, let's grab Rene yeah. for a second. Hey, Rene, 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 incredible first run. What are you going to do in run two? <laughs> Try to clean up this one a bit, and then uh, hopefully I can land that one, and then uh, on the third one something. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Get up there. Get up there. We look forward to it. Cool. Thank you so much. So a little jazz we'll be getting in the next couple of runs from Rene Rene Congress. I love it. So we turn our attention now to 23-year-old Red Gerard. Hard to believe he's making his ninth X Games appearance. Almost as difficult to believe he's only got one medal in his X Games career. As I said, this course really suits Red Gerard's riding. Switchboard slide, switchboard slide, same way out. Switch front board, same way. Here's that cap 10. 
Boom. What a clean landing. Switch backside 16, yep. 20, four and a half rotations. Does he go back 18? Fast. Oh. What? I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. This course and this rider are the perfect marriage for a slope style podium. The boy went yard. Red Gerard. I mean, what more could you want from a run here in slope style? Just look, look at how soft he lands. Right? A lot of riders in practice were struggling for speed. You have to land that quarter pipe perfect. Red Gerard lands it perfect every single time. Then goes back to back 1620s. Sorry, back to back. Sorry, back switch back 1620. Then an 1800. Correct. Backside 1800. Yes. I thought he was going to go back to back, but he adds the difficulty with the 1800. Perfect. I think. Red Gerard is going to like this score. A 93.66. Red Gerard takes over first place. Yeah, Red Gerard. <laughs> Where do you go from here? Uh, <laughs> Neither do I. He's a man of few words. He's yeah. always been that way. <laughs> I'm not a talker. I'm not a talker. <laughs> So we move on to Mons Roisland. An illustrious X Games career. That first rail, Brando, has me just befuddled. I can see it. I just see it in the eyes. It is such a far gap. Oh, wow. And just a very different kind of nollie flip out of the lip slide. Front side double, 1440 off the toes. Go 18, Mons. Go 18. Backside 18. 1800. He does He's it. in disbelief. The level, the level. He might have the broadcast in his ear. I thought he was listening to a track. He might be listening to you. Hot round, hot round, 18, 18. I mean, forget the 16. Let's just go for the big dog. Here's that lip slide. He kind of rocks from his front foot yep. to his back foot. Yep. Okay, let's take a look at front side double 1440 off the toes. He did that in big air with the tail grab. I like how he put it that kind of around the knee. Front side grab and then that back side 18. So how did the judges score this one? After Sven and Red Gerard and Rene put down top three runs so far in the day. Remember the best possible scores out of 100. So there's not a ton of room up there. <laughs> Getting a little tight. This will be interesting. Red Gerard, excuse me, our current leader with that 93.66. If you're new to slope style, it's not a certain amount of tricks you have to do or difficulty. It's that overall impression. Yes. Everything is put together within your singular run. Correct. And of course, the best run counts. A 92.66. Interesting. Just a point behind red into second place. Your thoughts there? I mean, that's a, that's a very, very tough one. That is a very, very tough one. I, both runs were incredible. And there he is, Mark McMorris. Check out the board he's riding. Absolutely love that Tiger graphic on his board. Why? He's a jungle cat, <laughs> especially when he hits this course. <laughs> he's a big cat. <laughs> the most winter discipline medals at X Games history, 22. Yeah, that's not a resume. That's uh, an injured list. I mean, going back to all the way 2011, this ain't no joke, Craig. No, he has worked so hard on his body, so hard on his board. That's part of the sport. You get hurt. Where you judge somebody is how strong they come back, and Mark has come back stronger and stronger every single time. Mark trying to make it a three-peat. Cab double 10 to the absolute bottom. Switch backside 16. 
Bigs the toes in, he's way over, needs a backside rotation here. Backside 16, 20! There's the kid. And you hear the sparky shouts from this Aspen crowd, seemingly picking up where he left off from last year in his search for a third consecutive slope-style goal. Mark McMorris does not skip a beat. What I really want to highlight is in between jumps two and three. He landed way over on the left and had to get all the way back over to the right and then back over to the left again. So I think that might have been what stopped him from trying that backside 1800 because I know that's one of his game plans. But look at how far down he goes on that cab. Double 10. Here's a look at the backside 16. I love that indie grab. Patented backside rotation with the indie, so different than you see the Weddle or even the Melon. And let's not forget, Mark did not compete in big air. He's usually in big air. He's putting his singular focus here into slope style as he awaits his run one score. A 95.33! Mark McMorris takes over first place. Wow! Thank you. That's Mark thank McMorris you. in search of that 23rd X Games medal. Love to chat with them if we could. Sparky, hey, Sparky, Mark, big, big, fans, big fans, big fans, big fans. Where do you go from here? Where do we go from here? We just try and clean it up. They uh, were very generous to me, so I'm very thankful for that. I can clean it up for sure, and definitely should maybe try and add a little bit onto that last jump. Yeah, what do you reckon, Craig? I think you go 18. You go at 16. Let's go 18. So let's get some. Yeah. <laughs> My boy. All right, get it. Okay, we'll run one in the books, but when we come back, we'll take a look into the first ever women's snowboard knuckle event here at X Games Aspen. And for a quick preview, let's take a look at the GoPro course preview with one of the legends of snowboarding. What up guys, Jamie Anderson here. We are in Aspen, Colorado for the Winter X Games. We're at the Knuckle Hut venue and we're about to do a GoPro course preview. Alrighty, here we go. When you approach knuckle hook, you definitely want to carry some speed in. Essentially, you're kind of hucking yourself off the knuckle. If you come in hot, you can butter, you can do hand drags, you can kind of get creative. As you know, this year is the first time women are in the knuckle hook, which is amazing. Oh my! That's fun. Well, we just wrapped up run number one here in the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style. And Craig and I are honored to be joined by our host and friend, Salema Masekela. Salema, I just got to get your take off of run one. It looks like it's going to be a heavyweight battle, especially between those top three. I mean, first of all, shout out to Coco Morase, who oh, yeah. I believe also won the style points this week. No doubt. Let's not forget the Shearling Coat tribute to <laughs> Yellowstone uh, in slope style. But I love the way the judges have set the bar this say like hey we're yeah. we are here to to move one through four back and forth we like it to be a back and forth and i think i think the rail section is really playing way you forget sometimes we get so excited about the jumps right like the the intricacies of the rail section are going to play a really big 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 part in how things go down crowning a goal today but i, I like red's chances to be the upset so here's cheering collins second run sitting in 10th place still looking for a full pool here Terrence Collins, Terrence Collins' first three rails all switch, and then his front board 630 out. Run one had that a lot cleaner. Front 10, backside 16. <laughs> And a cab 18. Wow. Lord. Lord, <laughs> Lord, Lord. The children like to torque fest. So here's the only thing I could take away from this run. Watch this front board 630 out. Puts on the left foot 
and then generates so much momentum whipping the body. In the run one, he kind of got a melon grab on that, maybe yeah. a little bit cleaner. So that's the only thing I can take away. What he didn't have in run one was this cab triple 1800 five full times around and the switch stale fish grab super unique to that cab rotation not a lot of folks doing that salama and brando but as salama said i right switch i switch tail i switch <laughs> I switched tail all day in, in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the rail section really could be the great differentiator when it's all said and done. Yeah, I like the intricacies of that 6.30 off with grab. Well, this is, this is probably one of my favorite riders on the planet right now. Because, not just because he's a great snowboarder, but his, his surfing exploits. Oh, yes. You're talking about Justice Henry Hankus V? Yes. So here's Judd's run two. <laughs> By the way, an 84 for Watch Cameron Brand Collins. Brando's throwing out governments. <laughs> <laughs> That's a regal government name. I love this backside 1080. Just dipping it. So good at riding transition is Judd. He can skate good, he can surf good, and he can ride the slope style course. And very good right now. Cab 18. Oh! Now, Judd has been struggling on this final jump with that cab rotation. We saw it in run one, just did not have the airtime to get around the 16 or the 18. What do you need, pop-wise, to, to get that? Like, how do you need to come off in order to, to make it all the way around? Well, I think you need a ton of air, and you need a ton of explosion, and I kind of want to take a look here. You can see how he's just like putting his base down to survive there. Didn't get to see the takeoff there, so maybe he just didn't have the proper takeoff, but you know, he's looking forward to that third and final run. So here's Chris Corning. Sitting in 10th. I like this kid's tenacity. He really displayed it last night. You know, there's some people's energy is like, oh, we're here for a good time. Chris Corning's saying, no, I'm here to win. And you saw that in big air. Like, each time he didn't make it, the disappointment level, like, he's, he's got another level of focus and intention. That switchboard slide pretzel, I think, could have been a little bit cleaner. Had to fight that one around. As that back to 270 out on. It's a very big rainbow rail. But when you see people struggle like that in the rail section, it makes you appreciate just how detailed you have, you have to be to make it look flawless. Very well said. Redemption. <laughs> There's the trick prowess. But as we said, there have been years where Chris Corning has only competed in big air and not slope style. I think you are seeing the evolution of his riding here at X Games Aspen 2024. People tend to forget Chris Corning's only 24 years old. <laughs> That's right? crazy. We've seen him so many times in big air perform some incredible tricks. Sorry, Brando, go ahead. Oh, that was a look at the Samsung flow motion there. But we've seen him do some incredible big air tricks, and, and I've been really impressed uh, with that style format change. He had a great style trick yep. in the big air his rail riding is you know the best I've ever seen it obviously that run he'd like to clean it up but he still got his third so 77.66 for Chris Corning and there you see I like how the judges decided to have a mostly flannel party <laughs> that might be, no, we no wear Tom Zekas in the crew that might just be purely <laughs> coincidental <laughs> So we're midway through run two of the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style. A lot more to come out here at X Games Aspen. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
Oh, big thanks to our friends at Samsung there getting all the sights from this weekend here at X Games Aspen 2024. We're midway through run number two of the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Sub South. So perfect time to bring in our panel of judges led by our head judge, Tom Zegas. Tom, uh, they really brought it there, especially those top three riders, Mark, Red, and Mons at the end of run one. Your thoughts going into run two with those guys? Yeah, honestly, um, they were all so close. And um, we're splitting hairs here. And <laughs> You look stressed out. Dude, yeah. I mean, you know, there, there's such little nuances we can go into, but we don't have enough time. But, uh, yeah, we're looking, for, looking forward to see uh, these next few runs. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Yeah, we will drop our next rider. I mean, he's, he, too. he really said it. Like, the nuances are so deep, it's hard to, to really yeah. explain. But fortunately, we have Craig here, <laughs> who's going to do just that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Minister of Nuance. <laughs> There's Sven Torgren with that monstrous 90 on run one. Good enough for not even a podium position here this afternoon. Sitting in fourth. Switch back, too, on that gap down, flat down. And that switch front board, same way. Favorite quarter pipe trick thus far for me. Switch double backside nine. Seen a lot of cap tens on it, but I like the way he rotates that switch double back nine and going down. And you commentator cursed him. <laughs> Just reached out and touched him, didn't you, Craig? You know what? I, I'm, and this may be a controversial ice cold take, but I don't believe in it. It's not a real thing. Uh, <laughs> switch back nine double. I love that so much. And then this, I don't know if he was going back 16 or back 18. Yeah, back 16 attempt right there. Question. As it's getting a little warmer, do you do you think we'll we'll, we'll see speed being a, a, a challenge? Because this is the warmest day of the week. This is the warmest day of the week. I do not think speed will be a challenge, only because we have seen everybody go to the bottom of every landing thus far. So yeah, let's maybe say it slows down a little bit. Mm. People are still going to be able to make the landings. You know, the only thing that it might hurt is if you have maybe a scrub or like a little bit of a fall in between jumps. That could be detrimental. Yeah. No but I, recovery I don't time. think it is um, going to change anybody's course of action. So here's Rene Renacongas, who put down a great run, stomping it out. And he chatted with Craig and I right after that first run. And he had said, we asked, what do you got for uh, run two, run three? And he's like, I don't know. What do you think? So where some riders strategically have ideas, I just think you're getting some improvisational jazz with Rene. <laughs> A lot of jazz and a lot of jazz hands. I think Rene, <laughs> Rene is a, like, like, a lot like Zeb Powell in that he really just, he comes from this place of in-the-moment creativity. Right. And that's why I think he's so many snowboarders' favorite snowboarder. There's a lot of people that have that mentality. They have that in-the-moment creativity. There's very few. It's a Zeb, it's a Rene to have the talent to match that. Your yeah. brain can think one yes. thing, but can your body do it? And Rene's can. I say the same about Ashad Ware and skateboarding. Such a grasp on board control. Such a grasp on how they rotate and land their tricks. Unfortunately, Rene going down right there. But um, switch double backside rodeo nine, switch tail grab. Nobody else will do that on that quarter pipe. Quarter pipe, pardon me. I uh, can guarantee it, Salama. I love that what he does to that brown rail. That backside Miller flip, but yeah. doesn't really go all the way to 360. Kind of holds that 180. He kind of just hand slides more than he I mean it's almost the full extension yeah Miller like, slide that's that's insane it is insane your your internal speed gauge when you're riding at a rainbow rail of that size going that fast being okay my hand is touching I'm weightless the entire way around <laughs> adjusting grip you might have put some thayers on there <laughs> a 45.66 for Rene so he'll hold on to his run one score. Protect Rene at all costs. Cosine. All right, so Red Gerard. First place run after run one, but then Mark McMorris. You're my hero, man. Sorry, I just got, just yeah, got grabbed yeah. a Rene hug. Yeah, we all got to say what's up to him. So here's Red. What can he do to knock on Mark's door here on run two? I mean, run one, in my opinion, was almost perfection. That switch on the front foot to the back foot 
270 out. Switch front board, same way. Sleeping up there. Here's the cab double 10. I think Mark's was bigger than, than Red's was, but that one was very big too. Switch back 16. Coming in hot. Back safe, 18. Yo. Filthy. It may not be nothing to y'all. I understand Red was made for this. It really was. And I just love, like, we forget that Mark has been such a mentor to Red on, on all levels uh, in becoming this really great, well-rounded snowboarder in, in any terrain. And I just love that, that they are battling each other here. What'd you see? I mean, Warren G and Nate Dog would be proud. He's handy with the steel up top. I said that at the top. Well, well, well played. Well but played. He is just so light footed on the rail. So every rail was perfect. And then this 1800 at the end, Brando. What do you think of that landing? Yeah, this is uh, parking lot edition. That's, that's Michael Bolts right there. <laughs> Michael, Michael Bolt. It's, it's just perfect. I mean, there's no doubt about it yet. Salama Craig and I. Uh, we enjoyed what we were watching. That's uh, the that's that's message to the judges, right? That's saying, hey, is this what you wanted to see from me? Oh, 96.33. Ah, we're swinging. Red Gerard leapfrogs Mark McMorris for first place. Wow. So I, I guess Red woke up this morning and said, all right, I will be playing the role of Marcus Cleveland. <laughs> like, I mean, Marcus, Marcus, you're at home. I will be stepping in yeah. and playing that role he, and battling Squat He woke up and chose violence. <laughs> That's mean, what there's, he did. there's no getting around it. But this is what the judges want to see because they know what he's capable of and they know what's Mark capable of. And don't forget about oh. Mons. Oh. Do you remember the good old days when you could have a little bobble and it, in in the rail section and be like, oh, that's that's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay anymore. It's not okay. Yeah, that used, especially on the first rail, you're like, I'll just make it up on the way down. No, thanks for coming out. We have some nice prizes for you at the door. But honestly, I am really curious as to what Mons does on his third and final run because, I mean, we see we saw his first run. That is gold medal potential. You Absolutely. Know? He's one of my favorite people to watch in the area. Like, some people just look way too comfortable, like, awareness-wise, and he's just chill in the most critical situations. The, there's always a calmness to his riding, and I think, Craig, you and I say it every year, that it's because of that he's strangely underrated, which I don't, will never understand. Well, uh, there you see Mark McMorris. We caught up with him a little earlier this week as he tells us about his charitable foundation in this Pacifico Discover More. I'm Mark McMorris, professional snowboarder and co-founder of the McMorris Foundation. My brother Craig and I started the McMorris Foundation because we had success in snowboarding and we realized that sport really shaped our lives and taught us a lot of life lessons growing up. Some of those lessons include perseverance, determination, relationship building, friendships. There's so many things that sport brings to life it's been so awesome having the success I've had at the X Games and I want to continue that, but to do something greater than just focusing on my own performance has uh, been extremely enlightening. Does he have the eye of the tiger here when he needs it most? He just got jumped for first place from Red Gerard. And you know what I love about that piece? And uh, Craig, you've pretty much known him your whole life. And Almost. Yeah, so. You've been around him a long time. Yeah. The perspective that Mark has gained over the years is just, it's really inspiring. Absolutely. Sport doesn't stop teaching you life lessons when you get older, right? It's not just a young kid thing. It teaches you lessons your entire life. Cab over two. I really like how he put that on his front foot. Here's the cap 10 that he went yard on last time. Come in switch. Much cleaner landing on the switch, the 16. Does he go 18 here? Oh! So he was going back 18. You can see him throw his hand there. 
But with that indie grab, it makes his rotation quite flippy, right? And when you do a flippy rotation at 1620, that's where you want to land. So if you're flipping and trying to fight it around to 18, it's just not really going to work out. Here's a good look, Salema, at that cap 10 in the Samsung Flow Motion. Good. Kids at home, did you see how he's looking up the landing and then putting his board down the landing? Like this 1620 right there. You don't want to look too early or else you start rotating. Here's the 16 that he went down on, however. A little weight on the back foot there. How competitive is your brother? Like a tiger, uh, <laughs> you, you never know. You like, never know. <laughs> don't let the smile fool you, folks. Hey, Mark. Mark, we're going to go to break. Uh, what do you got for the third run? Ten seconds. Oh, I'd love to clean it up. And uh, everything was a little bit cleaner that time, but I went a little slow on the last jump. That's all right. Go faster this time. We'll see you when we come back, folks. It's third and final run time here in the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style. A look at our standings, though, as we head into final runs. And it's Red Gerard leading the way. Mark McMorris right behind him. And Mons rounding out our top three. Cannot wait to see how this thing concludes. But before we do that, let's head back up top to D.C. Yeah, thank you, Brando. Well, I heard you guys talking about the speed, wondering if things are switching up out there. And I talked to Mons, who is sitting in that bronze medal position right now. And the birthday boy told me that speed's still great out there. He said it is warming up, but definitely plenty of speed out there. And also, Red, shout out to him on that second run where he put down that back 18 on that last jump, stomped it. His peers up here, everybody, the approval, the applause was a beautiful thing. And when that score dropped, they all agreed as well. Back to you guys. Thank you, DC. Astute. Reporting from DC up at the top. So Taiga Hasegawa oh. getting ready to drop in. He made his presence felt though here at Buttermilk that last was, evening, Salema. That was one of the tricks of the night. I mean, no disrespect to what he did right here, but that switch method was gorgeous. So Taiga earning his first career X Games gold last night. He's the youngest rider in our field here today. Right now, he's just trying to stick a run. Five foot two, 130 pounds of lightning and thunder. Cap two, 450 out, four for four up top. That cap 12 landing so deep. Let's see if he has enough speed. No issue. Okay. Taiga wanted to take a little bit of rotation from last night. That was a switch back 18, but he was going for the switch back 1980 there. <laughs> he was on one. He was going into that final kicker. He was. Yeah, he doesn't sit that down, and we could be talking about a leader, uh, and not, maybe not a leader change, but him jumping up. Oh, certainly. Into that third spot. I think it was this landing right here. Now, that. explain, because sometimes people would think like, oh, you go deep, that should be good. Why does that slow you down? There's a sweet spot in the landing, right? So let's say you go too short, you knuckle. If you go too far, you land on a very flat surface, high impact. And when you're landing that hard, you lose speed. You want to land right in the sweet spot to keep the speed. Make it almost look like you didn't even leave the ground. Right, that red Gerard back 18, it looked like he landed like a feather. Why? He landed in the sweet spot perfectly. He hails from Queenstown, New Zealand. New Zealand. His best score of an 84. He's Chiarn Collins sitting in sixth. Switch backside 270 on that down flat rail. Beautiful cap two, pulls it back so he's riding his natural stance. Here's that front board 630, Melon. I don't think he can do it better than that. Oh, 
Oh. Came up soup short. Very short, and I think that would be due to the takeoff there. That switch back 16 we saw on the second jump was perfection, as was this front board 630. Very, very well executed. But here's the fall. He's going cab 18. That's five full rotations, right? You want to get going on the takeoff. If you go a little bit early, that slows you down and doesn't let you get to the landing. So you lose the pop. Absolutely. So that'll do it for Collins' day. If you're just joining us, battle brewing between Red Gerard, Mark McMorris, and certainly Mons Roisland. But here now, Judd Hankus on what would be his final run of the day. Nice cap, two in, two out. Much better on that 50 front two to the rainbow teardrop rail. Front side 12. Judd has just been struggling with that cab takeoff all day. You can hear that scrape when he comes off the takeoff, and that like lets you know, like, oh, it didn't get the pop, and it slows you down. Absolutely. You can see the scrape and a little bit of the snow, maybe just a little bit early on that third takeoff, but major improvement on that 50 front side, too. Remember, last run, he went way over the rainbow rail. There he gets, gets it locked in. There's that final jump. He's kind of unable to bring it to his feet here today. Yeah, we all wanted that for him. Yeah, when you're watching someone have a perfect run like that. You no, he's breathing. A, <laughs> 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 we talk about him being an all-terrain vehicle. Dude, great skater, great surfer, snowboarder. I mean, obviously, he's snowboarding at the X Games, but I ask you, Salema, who surfs with him a lot, better surfer or snowboarder, Judd Hankus? I think Judd Hankus, right up there with Brock Crouch, like, they're two of the best surfing snowboarders on the planet. Like, not afraid to pull into really big barrels anywhere on the planet. You saw that in Judd's edit, right, which was so cool um, that he did with Gimbal God, mixing up snowboarding and surfing. So here's Chris Corning. Sitting in seventh place. Much better switchboard side pretzel than we saw earlier. That was buttery. It's a big rail to back two on. Okay, so he goes backside here. Oh. Pardon me, switch backside. I think he was going switch back 16 and then maybe a backside 1980, I think, on that final jump, but doesn't get there. Hopefully he's okay on that. It's crazy how deep he got sent. Like, when he landed off the shark fin, yeah. he, he landed in such a sweet spot, didn't scrub any speed, and you're like, oh, cool, he's going to be fine. He just got sent to the moon. And beyond the glory, how about the hardware? Dingo in the house with the briefcase. Keep all eyes on that man as he's holding the gold, silver, and bronze. That's what's at stake here on third and final runs. Sven Torgren, who had an outstanding first run, hit the 90 club, not even good enough for a podium spot. That's how heated this contest has been. Nolly back to so difficult to bring your tail up and over the rail before you start rotating that 270. What I love about this rail feature, yes, it's 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 tight and it's very difficult, but everybody has done very unique runs through the whole thing. Oh! oh. I love the way he was falling out of that too. Every single run that switch double back nine has taken my breath away. But <laughs> it still goes, still goes full spin. Wow. Even after what might have been a throwaway run, but there's only he's only got one speed. 
That's uh, the way to exit the, the party right there. All right, boys. Well, let's talk about the headlines here. Ooh. We've seen this before. Yes, we have. Mark McMorris wins, wins all types of ways, but if he wants the victory here today, he's going to have to come from behind. He'll be the last one to drop in. And Red Gerard seemingly getting stronger as this contest is going. But let's remember, as we saw last year in his battle with Marcus Cleveland, there's one person who thrives on being in that moment where they have to come back on a Sunday at slope style, and it is Mark McMorris. That's why he's got Tiger on his board, right? Exactly. I've seen Tiger do some pretty special stuff on a Sunday as well. Meanwhile, Rene could also get weird. He could get just weird enough to shake things up. Well, I love it because he did put down a great run on run number one. He's kind of playing with house money. If he could put it together here, nobody's riding this course like he is. Rene Hype. Switch backside 270. Gets to the end of the rail, but was maybe falling off a little bit early there. I love that gimbal got perspective through the rail section because you're able to actually get into the nuance. And you see how fast you have to attack these very difficult transfers. So not the cleanest landings on those 1440s, but that is mere semantics. When we get to watch Rene Renekongas ride on a Sunday in perfect weather, everybody wins. Yeah, and, and you know, he's one of those people who appreciates the moment and being here. And look at this dude, like full smiles, just like basking in the moment that this is what I get to do for a living. That coat goes hard. <laughs> Yeah, nobody's having a better time since Rene really got on the scene. It was just all smiles all the time. Yeah, him and Coco Morasa are having the best time <laughs> and making the best choices kit-wise. So, yeah, here's a look at yesterday. That back 18, I don't know how you can land it that cleanly. So that's the standard right there that we are looking at from the young, focused Red Gerard wants this moment again. He's been he's been watching Mark McMorris and studying what it takes on a day like this. Ooh, and and it, as much as he loves Mark, he ain't trying to give it up. No doubt. And again, it's not even just about Mark. It's about earning that first career X Games goal. But you know Mark is going to be there every step of the way. Here he goes. Beautiful cap 10 double. I just see confidence right now. Switch back 16. Oh, Red God. Dawn. Red Dawn at X Games. Woo! Red just putting a bow on it, Craig. Run one. Lands that run. Gets a pretty good score. Run two, goes back up, does it a little bit better, gets a better score. And run three, I think he may have even done it a little bit better. Yeah, he hits X Games mode. Three, four, three. Mia, Mia Brooks mode. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's face it, she did the same thing in women's slope style each run. And Red said, let me, let me get some of that. Samsung flow motion as we take another look. Did he just climb the ladder even further? That takeoff on a backside 1800 is perfect. Even a little poke. Do you see that melon yeah. poke? Right there. A little shout out Chaz Gulman. And that Red backside G. melon rotation. <laughs> we loved it. You can see the confidence in his body language every single feature. Red Gerard goes X Games mode. Does he give himself some more breathing Ooh. room? He does. A 97. <laughs> Let's get him over here. Just two riders left to drop after Red clings to first place. Big fella. Big fella. How do you go three for three on 18s like that? Oh, man, I don't know, man. It's just damn Aspen X Games. It's freaking perfect out. Everything's great. We've had like four days of practice on this beast of a course, and, man, I just feel lucky to land three runs. Any time that happens is a 
Gosh darn blessing. Will they get better scores and better scores and better scores? You're in first place. Couple riders left to go. We'll see you in a bit, Red. Golly gee, I love that kid. I had dinner with Red on uh, Tuesday night, and he just couldn't stop gushing about the course. Mm. He was like, I love the fact that the jumps are set up in a way where we're not too locked, we have time to set up. And he liked the fact that it was the, the, the rail section was critical enough that like you didn't have room to move. All right, so Red in that commanding spot of first place, but nothing is given, all is earned. Mons Roisland sitting in that bronze medal spot. Can he jump up the ladder? Switch back 12. But he's spinning off his toes so he can maybe save that. Yep. Frontside 1440, double Rowdy. off the toes. Backside 1800. <sighs> Mons needed the run he landed in run one, but he needed to be absolutely perfect if he wanted to contest with that 97 from Red Gerard. Nonetheless, I could watch that all day. Could watch that all day. Such, such a good trick selection from Mons Roisland. <sighs> Guys, Red Gerard did his job. Put more distance. Absolutely. Put more distance because he knows what Mark is capable of. He was here last year when he crushed Marcus Cleveland's dreams. Now, what does, what does Mark have in the tank? Red, this, you know it better than anyone else, Craig. What's going through, through his mind right now? He's got to enter the zone. Flow state, I think. <laughs> Red Gerard has ridden the best we've ever seen. Mark McMorris is the most dominant athlete in the history of Winter X Games. You see him right there on the right. Last name ever, first name greatest. He's not just searching that was, for that 23rd X Games that, that medal. Was, that was a bot. He's looking for another X Games gold medal. He's looking for the three-peat. He's got to do it right now. Saskatchewan comes correct wow. again. Wow. There's that was a beautiful run. In my personal opinion, that does not put him ahead of Red Gerard, though. I would agree with you. Talk to us about the strategy. Now, Mark, I think, matches Red in every single hit, all right? Everything would be equal, but the final jump, Red did that backside 1800, and he did it perfectly. Mark does the backside 16. Now, Mark does an indie on his backside rotation, which I think is more difficult. And it is still 1620, don't get me wrong, but I do think Red Gerard's 18 was a little bit stronger. It all comes down to this. Would need to best a 97 to jump from second to first. And it's a 96! Red Gerard wins his first career X Games gold medal! <laughs> Sometimes you just, you can, you can tell energy-wise energy yeah. is gonna be someone's day. Absolutely. And that was Red Gerard from the jump today. But as you two gentlemen said, Mark was leading after run one. The judges said, we know what you're capable of, Red, so come and get it from Mark. And he did that. He answered the call. He and actually that, did. So he easily could have been sh been shaken by that and been, been rattled to the point where he couldn't. And he answered the call big time. Dingo's got the gold while wearing a gold kit fitting, and he puts it around Red's neck for the first time ever. Let's head over to DC. Who's with the gold medalist? Uh, thank you guys. 
Fred Gerard, yeah. my man, in seven X Games appearance, the gold has eluded you. You've had such an accomplished career, but to finally get this X Games gold medal, man, this moment, what does this mean to you? Oh, man, it's everything. You know, I, I grew up watching these contests like X Games and Dutor and US Open, you know, to have a goal here means like everything to me and to do it with Mark McMorris the fucking man over there the best snowboarder in the world and just to just to land three runs man today was just perfect and I, I'm just so happy and your whole family attendance as well I know yeah. everybody we're all proud of you we love you yeah I love you guys thank you Aspen what a magical moment for Red Gerard. He was in search of his first career X Games gold, and he gets it out here today in the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style. We've got a massive event schedule here today. We'll be right back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. <laughs>